Hey guys, so this is a real-time demonstration of how I am going to be painting a portrait using super inexpensive uh, watercolors and super inexpensive paper. So in classes going forward, I've decided I'm going to try to focus on using these Analinky inks. Um, they're by Koinor. You can get them pretty much anywhere in the world. And their benefit is they are under five pounds and they produce super, super brilliant colors. Downside is they're a little less malleable when you get them on the page, but for the fact that you can practice and create tons of paintings using such an inexpensive set, I think it's absolutely worth it. So I think going forward, I'll be using these watercolors. The base skin tone I'm going to be creating, super simple. You can use this for pretty much all skin tones as like a base master color where you create this color and add more brown or more blue um, or more yellow, depending on what skin color it is. But most skin tones, all skin tones really, are going to be some sort of combination of this brown here and this red here. I know they're hard to see. That's one of the kind of difficulties of using these watercolors where, you know, they're so dark because they're so intense in their um, color that they appear almost black here. But as with any watercolor, you just want to do some test strips before you get started of each of these colors so that you know what you're doing. And the benefit of this is that I can simply say add brown and red. And, you know, there isn't an infinite combination of browns and reds that you can use. We're just using these two. And for creating different colors, one of these is purple. I think it is this one. Yes, it is this one. I'm going to be adding in some purple. Oops. That's thalo blue, I'm gonna be using that too, so I'll just keep that here. I don't know which one I just touched, but I'll keep this here mixed with some more of this brown for some of the cooler tones, add in a little bit of red. Really simple, there aren't that many choices, which is great. Limitation can be a really great uh, form of inspiration. And then I'll make up some slightly richer color here. So I'll add in some of that purple that I just mentioned a second ago here. And I'm ready to start. I'm going to start with a very, very diluted mix of just that red and brown to begin with. And I'm going to be covering just about all of the face except for the areas that I want to keep as a highlight. So you'll want to do a couple test strips first. I know I didn't do this, but this is, this is going to be the first color. And for this, we're just going to be doing a um, graduated wash. So I'm putting in paint along the sides. I really should be using the largest paintbrush that I have for this. So I'll use this. I'm blending it inward. So I've got a little bit of blue on my brush. That's fine. It's just going to blend in with the rest of the paint. If you can, Try propping your uh, watercolor up on something while you paint. So I'm doing this straight up and down, but propping it on a board is going to be helpful in just making sure that the paint all drips down in the right direction so you don't end up with little puddles over your page. And even though I am quite impatient, I'm trying to be patient with this. Uh, you really don't want to be overlapping too many of your brush strokes. So you want to be like carefully putting things side by side. And it's one of these things that's like easier said than done when you want to cover a large amount of ground. But it's actually quicker if you just slow down a bit and really focus on placing your brush strokes side by side than it is to rapidly try to cover a lot of ground using unorganized brush strokes. So this I'll just be more mindful as I move along of my brush strokes so I can control them. I can even come into the hand and get just some base color here. So here I'm not just getting this layer of paint down. I'm also wetting the paper for future wet on wet washes. And I'm just ignoring the areas that I want to keep as highlights.
I'm actually going over the eyes. So I know that seems strange, but basically eyes are gonna reflect everything that's going around them. So getting some of your flesh tone into the eyes just saves you the step of remixing up your colors and including that flesh tone in them. I'll get in a little bit of color on the top of the ear. The side of the ear. And the great thing here is that I can just mix up those two colors. They are right next to one another. So I don't need to like, you know, search around for using the same red and the same brown that I have. It is just red, it is just brown. It makes things so much simpler. I wanna test that out. Okay, that's a little bit little bit overly red so I can just add a little bit more brown to that dilute and I'm using exactly the same color just a little bit more concentrated to start to move in and get some of the more like refined structures of the face so just moving down you can create really nice washes with these watercolors. Trying to let the brush just do the work. Now I'm coming in with just a brush with just water. I'm moving along the edges of forehead just to blend these in a little bit. And I'm also gonna move some of this up into the hairline for later. All right, so now I'm going to move in with just the brown, and I'm going to add little bits of this thalo and brown, brown mixture for some of the cooler areas around the eyes and the lips. So let's get started. So for just the brown, I'm gonna move around the eyes.
And I'll move them with some of that phthalo mixture for like the cooler areas, like on the inside of this eye here. This eyebrow. So here I'm just using brown and brown and thalo. Now a more diluted mix of that phthalo blue and brown mixture. The upper eyelid here. More of that brown to create contouring for the eyes. So basically I'm like, I'm using a cool value and warm value. Each color has uh, different values depending on what it's placed next to. And in this case, the pure brown is going to be the warm tone whereas the brown and phthalo, phthalo mixture is going to be the cool tone. If you can make yourself just like use only a few tones at a time, it'll make your life a lot easier as you move across your watercolor painting. Now I'm gonna add some of that phthalo and blue mixture to the actual eyes themselves. I'm just looking around to see if there's anywhere else I can use this cool mixture. I can use some of it on the underside of the nose, so some more of that cool mixture. a little bit cooler, so I'm going to use a dilute, very dilute wash of this over some of the hand. And I'm going to put the rest of this wash in the background. So we'll add a little bit more blue just for the sake of having a little bit more of an interesting color but this is going to offset all the values in the face. You want, you can add some ultramarine to that as well, just to kind of make it a little bit richer as we move down. Okay, so now I wanna make these colors around the face a bit richer. So I'm going to make a mixture of brown and purple. So it's hard to see, so you do need to test these out beforehand, but I believe this is, yes, that is purple. So the purple is right next to the brown, brown and purple. And I'm going to use this for the areas, some of the areas that are in the shadows. You can 
drop this in around the eye because that's pretty wet. So I know it's going to lead into the surrounding areas. And I'm going to use this on the underside of the nose. before using clear water to blend it down into the rest of the nose. And I've also got a dramatic shadow coming down this side of the face, bypassing that little area where we see the side of the nostril. and moving down around one side of the mouth and the chin. So one side of the face is more in the dark than the other. And I can use this to do some contouring on the lips as well. I'm adding little bits more brown where it warms up. So just a little bit more brown now as I move towards the dimples on the side of the chin. And then some clear water to blend that. This purple and brown mixture is also going to form the shadow underneath the chin. And with clear water, I'm just going to contour this neck area a little bit more and move up the side of the face. So I'll be just a little bit more contouring on the side of the face. There's also going to be a very dilute shadow coming down over this eye and on this side of the face, as well as over the bridge of the nose. So definitely practice on a sheet of paper diluting this color first, but we're going to just move in. It's sort of picking up like the sides of the nose as it falls across the face. So it's like, it's following the contours and then hitting hidden details in the highlights. As I move up, I can make that richer if I want by adding just more medium. Now it's, it's just a little bit oversaturated, but that's, that's fine. The nice thing with, with using a layering technique like this is that part of the composition is the effect of the watercolor. So it's not like you're hiding from your viewer the fact that you're using watercolors, having some visible brush strokes can create more of a cohesive painting because it shows your viewer that you're intentionally using your medium. And I think that intentionality is important because when it comes to portraiture, to be completely honest, goils, if you know, you really want to make a photorealistic portrait. Oils are your best bet. Oils are the easiest ways to go. Watercolors are not the easiest way to go, but they can create some really, really beautiful effects. So I think they're definitely worth using. 
Now I'm coming in with just some of that brown for the hair. as well as the brown and purple for the darker parts of the hair. So here I'm just using brown and brown and purple. If you want, you can add some of that yellow into it. But again, um, if I didn't mention it before, you really want to dilute your yellows if you're using these inks because they are way more concentrated than some of the other, pig, um, other dyes here. So the yellows are very intense in this set. Now at this point, I'm going to mix together some more of that red and brown mixture that I was using in the beginning at the same concentration, just because there are a few more details I want. So one side of that hand, that finger, and up here. And with a really dilute amount of that, I want to get some contouring on the nose. So. I'm going to come in, it's just red and brown, if you want here, if you want to create just some difference in the color, you can add a little bit of the yellow, the orange yellow to that, it's the one that looks like it's red, but remember that you really, 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 really need to dilute it quite a, quite a bit before adding it to your red and brown mixture, because that yellow is going to really dominate the rest of the color, so I'm just coming in with a really dilute Layer of that to soften up the edges of the nose. Now I'm going to move into the lips. And for the lips, I'm going to use red, but I'm also going to use this white here. For watercolors, and particularly these with this white, it's important not to think of white as something that you use to lighten your paints. Lighten is something, white in this context is something you can use to make a brassy red less brassy. So it's something that you use to sort of dull your colors. It's not a means of lightening them. And a similar thing goes for the black in this and, and black and watercolors in general. You shouldn't think of black as something that is to be used to make things darker. You wanna think more about concentration of your paints to make things darker. Rather black is something to be used to make things duller or in really extreme areas like uh, occlusion shadows. So the darkest part of the shadow, you can come in with some black, but in that case, you really want to use it sparingly and save it for the very end. I'm going to darken up the sides of the mouth just with some brown 
and a little bit of either purple or black. But if it's black, again, just dilute it a lot. I'm going to test that these areas are dry. If they're dry, we can start to add in some of the higher contrast areas like the nostrils. So fingers crossed, this is adequately dry. I would recommend using a hair dryer if you have one. I'm just going to come in now to get the nostrils and add a little bit of red to that to get this tiny shadow at the base of the nose. And now the eyes. So I've got a shadow over the eyes. I'm just gonna reinforce that shadow I've already put down. And at the base of the eye, I want this color a little bit more consistent. So I'm just gonna bring that lower eyelid up and also use a red and brown mixture just to kind of slowly fade a little bit of an under eye area. So a little bit more contrast there. You don't want to overdo this or your reference will look just super, super old. And at this point, I can also, well, I want this, to, I'll, I'll wait for that to dry, but then I'll, I'll darken up that area on the inner corner of the eye. So I'm just going to about the hair dryer. I'm going to get my hair dryer, dry this very quickly. Now I can move into some of the details in I. So I'm going to use black for this, just black diluted. Black is on this end. Nope, it's not that. That's green. It's black. I'm going to add a bit of phthalo blue to the black, as well as like a little bit of the brown mixtures I've been using. I'm going to start with the eyelash, so I'm not going to do individual eyelashes, just one darker area. And then come in with the eye, or sorry, the iris, leaving a little bit of empty highlight at the base. Now that this is dry, I can reinforce the upper eye area just using more of that phthalo blue, purple, and brown mix. And I want some variation in, in the eyebrows. So I'm just going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to my brown mixture. You can use, you know, experiment with different colors here. I'm just 
making sure there's a slightly different tone in some parts of the eyelashes and the hair just create a little bit more variation. And also come in and just edit in any details that I want to kind of tighten around the face. And if you really want to kind of like push this, you can do a little bit of contouring around the eyes, a little bit of like the inner eye tear duct area. Going to use brown to create the darker part of the eye. And also, I'll get some darker shade on the side of the hand. Okay, so I hope this was helpful and uh, don't forget to share your work at Soho underscore life underscore drawing.